This program has been made by the friends and partners of Jennifer LeClaire Ministries. We hope you enjoy today's teaching. Much of the trouble we have in our life right now is because of the decisions, the choices, the contracts that we signed in past seasons. And sometimes there's, a, you know how the Bible says there's seed, time, and harvest time? Look at it this way. There's seed, time, and harvest. When you plant an apple seed in the ground, you don't get an apple tree tomorrow. It takes time. So many times what we're reaping in our life in this season, it wasn't what we sowed yesterday. It was what we sowed 10 years ago. on a series on spiritual contracts. Somebody say spiritual contracts. Spiritual. Hmm. I remember when I signed my first book deal with the publisher. Man, I'll tell you what, I had just left a very abusive church and they cursed me on the way out the door and they said, you're never gonna amount to anything, you're never gonna be anything. And this was this Jezebelic spirit operating over this church. Now I didn't agree with the curse so it couldn't land. Yes, Amen. Amen. Too many times we agree with the curses, and that's why they land. I left that church, and, you know, I wanted to get a book deal so bad for many years, and God was preparing me for that type of promotion. You know, when I, I self-published books for a long time before I got a book deal. And I, and I sent in a book on defeating Jezebel to a publisher, and I said, you know, would you like to write a book? Here's a summary. Well, when you go to write a book, they don't just look at your manuscript. They make you submit a proposal. Then after that, you have to write an outline. Then if they like that, then you write a chapter outline. And if they like that, then they have a big board meeting and they decide whether or not or when they're going to publish your book. And so this takes about six months, man. And every day I'm waiting for the email because I'm just sure vindication is my portion. And one night I got home from the gym and I got a phone call from the publisher and she says, Jennifer, we're going to publish your book on defeating Jezebel. I mean to tell you, I jumped up and down. I was screaming hallelujah. I was dancing all around my office because it wasn't just a dream come true. It was vindication. I was so happy. I don't really get that happy over book deals anymore, but that was my first one. <laughs> Amen. And then what they do is about six weeks later, you get a contract. You get a contract, it's about 20 or 30 pages long. And the contract outlines all the, the things, the royalty rates, what the advances you're going to receive, and all the good things. They're going to give you this many copies, and they're going to help you publish it. They're going to do all this stuff. But it also has all this fine print with a lot of mumbo jumbo. And you got to read it. You better read it. You got to read it because there's all kind of stuff in there, right? And so, you know, you go do that because, the, because a contract, a contract is two-sided. A contract is not one-sided. And so I had to look at all of this. It's 20 pages long. Contracts, there's always a give and a take. When you enter into, con you have to say there's always a give and take, right? There's always something to lose if you don't uphold your side, I mean, there was immorality clauses in my contract. If I missed the deadline, they were going to find me. There was all these things. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, I wasn't worried about it because I knew that I could meet the other side. But many of us, we enter these spiritual contracts or natural contracts without thinking about what we're doing. And then we pay the price for years and years and years and years and years and years. There's always a risk when you enter into a contract of any kind. So we're going to talk to you today and for the next few weeks about contracts, talk a little bit about natural contracts, but also mostly spiritual contracts, because the spiritual contracts, the contracts you sign with your mouth, because some of you are like, what's a spiritual contract? It's a contract you sign with your mouth. Spiritual contracts that you sign ripple through your natural life. Spiritual contracts can affect your marriage, can affect your mind, can affect your destiny. Natural contrast can affect your spiritual life, can affect your soul. So we want to look at all this. And many of you may have learned the hard way, and some of you may not have seen the implications of natural and spiritual contracts you're signing, but they're there. So we're going to talk about that. So, Father, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, 
a heart to understand. We need your wisdom. We need to expose the work of the enemy. We need to understand how seriously you take contracts. We need you. So open our ears wide today and help us even as I speak the word, as I give examples from scripture. Would you help us today to remember anything that we've said, any signed contracts in the natural or the spirit that may be trying to come back to haunt us in this next season so that we can take action against them? In Jesus' name, amen. So the Bible has a lot to say about contracts, right? So we want to first look at the definition of contracts, and and, and we want to scratch below the surface. See, here's the problem. Many people haven't read the fine print in in the contract, the spiritual contract they signed with their mouth. Remember how I told you that there's fine print? You ever go to buy a car? You ever buy a house? I mean, it's like, dear God, my hand is cramped. From signing all the pages, I feel like I'm signing my life away. But you have to read all that because have you ever heard it said the devil's in the details? When it comes to spiritual contracts, the devil's in the fine print. And so we've got to be aware of what it is we're doing, what it is we're saying. A contract is an arrangement, a commitment, or a guarantee. Okay? A contract is a pledge, a covenant, or a promise. A contract is a binding agreement. See, a contract can bind you. Some of you are bound because of a contract that you signed with your mouth. Hmm. A contract is a binding agreement between two or more persons or parties. A contract is a business arrangement for the supply of goods and services. A contract may be an act of marriage or an agreement to marry. A contract, uh, the defective one definition of a contract is an order or arrangement for a hired assassin to kill someone. Dear God, <laughs> did I ever tell you when my husband ran off when he was 30 and I was 29, he runs off, goes to another nation, you know, connects with this woman half of his age, and there was, we, you know, I live, was living down in South Beach, and we, and we had, you know, all these friends there, most of them were Colombians. Let that sink in. And these Colombians felt very bad about what he did. They were kind of angry with him. They were like, well, how could he do this? You got a little baby and everything. We don't get it. And they said, listen. (laughs) Escúcheme, mujer. (laughs) They said, listen, come close. And they leaned in. They said, we can knock him off for $5,000. We'll give you the family price. <laughs> no joke. They offered to snuff him out for five. They were so mad at him. And I, and I, I thought about it for a while. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. I wasn't even saved yet, and I didn't even think about it. I was like, I, what I did was I, I packed up all my stuff, and I moved away because I thought I might be next. You know, <laughs> These are not people that you want to anger. I said, I don't know, but I'm out of here. I'm not signing this contract. <laughs> but listen to what contract also means. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you're listening, say amen. amen. It also means to bring on oneself, especially inadvertently. And this is where we get in trouble. We're signing these spiritual contracts inadvertently. We're not even thinking about what we're saying. We're not even paying attention. We're mad. We're frustrated. We're angry, and we speak all this stuff out of our mouth. And the devil says, thank you for signing my contract of destruction. Thank you for signing my hit on your life. Thank you for allowing me to take out your child with addictions. Thank you for letting me destroy your marriage. You've given me permission. You signed a contract. Oh, Jesus, this is getting serious now. Have you unknowingly entered into a spiritual contract? The world of spiritual contracts is mysterious, but very real. And we sign those contracts with our mouth. Throughout scripture, we see spiritual contracts with God that led to life and death. We see spiritual contracts with the enemy that drove nations to war. Just the same, we sign spiritual contracts that either advance us or hold us back. That's why it's critical for you to understand the hidden secrets and power of spiritual contracts. 
Join me for this new series at schoolofthespirit.tv. Watch online at schoolofthespirit.tv slash contracts. <laughs> so we don't always think about what we're getting ourselves into with our marriages, with covenant friendships, with words of our mouth. We don't see the spiritual implications of our thoughts, our words, our deeds. And you, out, you might get mad at me, but I love you. <laughs> Somebody say, I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> you and I, we, I'm going to lump myself in here. I'm no better than you. We are the product of the contracts we signed in earlier days of our lives. We are, the, we are the product. What The circumstances in our lives right now are largely, and I know the enemy doesn't fight fair. I know sometimes the enemy comes in. We don't have to have an open door. You know, he attacked Jesus. Jesus had no sin, so clearly we don't have to have an open door. But much of the trouble we have in our life right now is because of the decisions, the choices, the contracts that we signed in past seasons. And sometimes there's, a, you know how the Bible says there's seed time and harvest time? Look at it this way. There's seed, time, and harvest. When you plant an apple seed in the ground, you don't get an apple tree tomorrow. It takes time. So many times what we're reaping in our life in this season, it wasn't what we sowed yesterday. It was what we sowed 10 years ago. That's why we have to be quick to repent. And we're going to talk later in the series about how to, how to deal with these contracts because the Holy Spirit is going to begin to show you because there's good contracts and there's bad contracts. He's going to begin to show you throughout this series. And you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can see the picture. I'm connecting the dots. And the good news is once you send what? An enemy exposed is? Amen. Amen. I taught you well. I'm so happy. So it may take time. So let's look at what the Bible says about contracts. We're going to go deeper into all this throughout the series. I'm laying a foundation because to many of you, this is a, a foreign concept. You've never heard it before. And I want to make sure that you have the faith to receive the rest of what I'm going to say in the following weeks. So we're going to go deeper, but I want to set the stage. So Genesis 3, verse 15. And this is the NET version. Genesis, and Because God takes the contracts seriously. He takes them seriously. We need to take them seriously. Genesis, I'm sorry, Galatians, Galatians, Galatians. I got new glasses, and I think they're all jacked up. They're like all wonky. I got them at glasses.com. It took them three months to send them. That was my commercial for glasses.com. It was not a favorable experience. Galatians 3.15. Brothers and sisters, somebody say that means me. I offer an example from everyday life. When a covenant, when a contract has been ratified, even though it is only a human contract, no one can set, a, can set it aside or add anything to it. Once you sign the deal for that house, you can't go back and say, uh, yeah, you know what, I'd like to negotiate a, a lower price. You already signed the contract. Once you drive that car off the lot, whatever you agreed to pay, that's what you're going to pay. You signed a contract. Well, I can refinance. Okay, whatever. Don't get legalistic with me. The reality is you know what you're getting at. You need to know what you're getting into. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. This is in the Sermon on the Mount. This is the constitution of the kingdom right here. Matthew 5, 6, 7 is the constitution of the kingdom. Matthew 5, 37. You have also heard that your ancestors were told you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say to you, do not make any vows. Jesus said, listen, it's better not to make any vows at all. Because chances are, when you make a vow to God, you're probably not going to keep it most of the time. You have good intentions when you make the vow. But we don't always keep our vows to the Lord. That's why it's better not to do it. He said, do not make any vows. Do not say by heaven because it's God's throne. And do not say by earth because earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say simple, just say a simple yes I will or no I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. 
here's the thing. The enemy, listen very closely. The enemy will inspire us to make rash vows. To enter into covenants with people too quickly. To get married too fast. To sign the business deal too quickly. Sign an employment contract too quickly. He said anything else than this, anything beyond the yesterday, comes from the evil one. My God. So as we go through this series, we're going to see some tragic stories about conflicts in the spirit, wars, all sorts of things that happen to people in the word because they signed spiritual contracts. That's why scripture warns us to be careful, to be cautious. Look at this. Proverbs 17. Now, this, a lot of this is looking at the natural realm, but this, this, the same principle applies to the spirit realm, okay? Proverbs 17, verse 18. Proverbs 17, 18, it's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. You better be careful before you sign on that loan. No, co-sign on that credit card. <laughs> it's not wisdom. It says it's poor judgment. Poor judgment can cause us to enter into natural and spiritual contracts, sometimes inadvertently or without realizing what might happen in the future. Now, I'm not telling you can't co-sign on a loan for your kids to get their first house. I'm saying you need to pray about it first because your name is on the line. Your credit is on the line. Proverbs 22, verses 26 and 27. Proverbs 22 Verses 26, 27, Do, don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. Listen, listen, if you can't pay it, even your bed will be snatched out from under you. <laughs> Is that what the Bible says? At Jennifer LeClaire Ministries, our heart is to sow into the lives of people who may never otherwise hear the gospel of Christ or break out of bondage. Although we've traveled to dozens of nations in strategic missions to evangelize and equip believers, there's more work to do than we can possibly get done by ourselves. That's why JLM is partnering with ministries around the world to help them do what they do best. We're partnering with ministries in India that are transforming the lives of people with leprosy. Ministries in Africa that are bringing clean water to the masses. Global ministries taking the hope of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Messiah-centered ministries in Israel that are doing the work of Christ in the Middle East. Ministries that provide a hand of hope to hurting people in America's inner cities and the nations. When you sow into JLM, you are sowing into the work of God in the nations. Together, we're better. Will you partner with us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, to feed hungry people, to bring hope to the addicted, and more? You can sow a seed today at jenniferleclair.org slash missions. Thank you for your partnership.